Hello everyone, it is time for another live. I am feeling right and bright this morning, as you can see from my outfit. I'm starting to channel summer. Um, what have you guys been up to? What have you been doing since Tuesday? What has your week looked like? I, I'm so excited for this because I know you guys sent in a lot of questions that you wanted to ask. There she is. I'm looking for Freddie. There she is. By a Quinn sister, Frederica, and I hope that she can answer as soon as possible so we can get. Hi! Hi! Oh my god, I love your outfit today. Love... Thank you. Thank you. So I get so excited when people pop into my screen because I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> At first, it used to be such a struggle. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, trying to keep myself busy besides having a lot of time that I'm not yeah. used like the uh, nothing. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah. And it's so it's so crazy that literally straight after your reign, this starts happening, and it's like you're so used to being busy now, just in one place. The I last know. time, the last time I saw you, I was saying goodbye to you in in a car. We were at a mall. And it was so packed. I remember it was so hot. Mm -hmm. And everybody was just so excited to see you. You know, they had so much love for you. What, what has that love meant to you throughout this whole journey from, from your country? I mean, it's been amazing. And I think, I mean, I definitely felt it throughout my journey. But the most significant memory is probably when I was at Miss Universe, like competing for my country. It was amazing to see the ton, like uh, the amount of support I got from my country, and not just like from pageant lovers, you know, people who are interested in pageants, but from, you know, the whole Indonesian community, because they understood that, you know, this girl, she's bringing Indonesia's name yeah. through an international platform. So when they saw that, I guess they tried to sort of support me in many ways that they could, and yeah. that meant that meant a lot to me, especially on the final night and then coming home, seeing all the reaction videos when Indonesia made top 10, like yeah. for the first time. For the first time. It was, I know. Oh, I mean, I and cried you. seeing everyone's reaction. Right. Young, you were one of the youngest contestants in, in our year. Um, am I correct uh -huh. in saying you were one of the youngest contestants who ever competed for Indonesia as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how incredible is that? Has it always I been know. like your dream to be... Um, a putri or is it something that sparked your interest like later on in life maybe i mean i guess being a girl like when i was really young i guess because indonesia pageants are really big so every time i would visit i, I grew up in australia so every time i visited indonesia to see my family here i'd mm -hmm. always hear about the pageants and you know i would watch it with my mom and my family and they would sort of support me and say when i was a young girl like oh, this is what you should do when you grow up. You know, you can be the... Because Putri Indonesia, translated to um, English, means princess of Indonesia. Princess, yeah. So when a g young girl gets told, you know, you could be the princess of Indonesia, princess of I was Indonesia. like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, yeah, as the years go by, I saw how big the platform meant to so many young girls and how it changed their lives, especially in Indo when... You know, we get given the opportunity to meet the president. We get given op the opportunity to meet such influential people in our country. I knew that that was such an opportunity that would open so many doors for me. And it would teach me so much at such a young age. So that definitely oh, okay. drew me towards the pageant world. <laughs> what about you? How did it start for you? Um, for me, it's always interesting when people ask me, did you always know? Um... Not so much because unlike Indonesia, South Africa is not really that big of a pageant country. So it's not really a dream that you have as a young girl to go into the global stage and represent your country. So it's not something that I really grew up having at the back of my mind. But I think as I grew, I wanted to become a Miss South Africa more than maybe international pageants, because like I said, still, we didn't know much about those, uh, but we knew what Miss South Africa was and, and the things that those yeah. women stood for. And I think I was so attracted to the platform and what these women were bringing into the platform. They had so much passion for the things that they did. You know, they, they lived a life that was so much bigger than they are. 
Um, and because I read a lot, I've read about incredible people and I just wanted to do things like that too with my life. And so that platform, um, you know, presented itself. But mm-hmm. soon, obviously, South Africa became more of a pageant country. I mean, we're still not there yet. And as much as we actually um, are quite stepping up that ladder, people are starting to wake up to international pageants and understanding what Miss Universe is, um, especially after Demi won, because then people started to say, okay, well, what is, what is this Miss Universe thing now, you know? <laughs> and yeah. so soon it became a goal as well, because I was like, okay, now there's certainly something else to aspire to, uh, yeah, you know, something sure. more. And yeah, so I think, I think as I grew up, my, my curiosity started peaking. I, I wouldn't say mm-hmm. since I was a young girl, no, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, how yeah, long did and you I take also... to prepare yourself? Like mentally, uh, prepare myself. mentally, emotionally, like how? When did you start and, and how was that process? I guess it, I started seriously preparing for my national competition probably a year before the pageant. Like I had it in my mind two years prior to it, but I started actually like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. How do I get there? How do I become Miss Indonesia a year before? So that's when I started training uh, at a pageant training uh, place, which is uh, yeah, I had a trainer in Indonesia, which taught me how to walk, taught me how to talk and everything. Well, pageant questions, basically. And I guess the biggest preparation that I had to prepare for my national pageant is just how could a young girl enter the competition without being bombarded mentally? Because it's a lot for someone as young as me to go into a pageant, being sort of judged by not just your looks, but everything, what you bring to the table, what you've done in your life. So that was a big, that was a big jump for me. So I guess the, the thing that I learned the most was, you know, to let go of my insecurities before entering this pageant and actually like trying to accept my flaws and really love the person I am because, you know, being unique and your true self was something that kept me strong throughout both pageants, because I know that a lot of people throughout any journey you come across, they'll try to change you as a person. Uh, Miss Indonesia should be or what they think a Miss Universe should be. So trying to step away from those people and just like listening to yourself and say, these are my positives. These are my strengths. I'm going to use that in this competition, despite what people tell me to, like to change. Forget about that and just focus on what, I, what needs to get done. So... Yeah, probably a year. What about you? I, you know, I love that you, when I asked you, how did you train? How did you get yourself there? You didn't speak, you didn't speak a lot about your looks. Like you didn't speak a lot about training to walk. You didn't speak a lot about putting together your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. You you spoke a lot about Mm -hmm. your emotions and your intellect and your mental health. And I feel like those are the most important things if you're coming into the Mm -hmm. competition. Fashion can be learned. Walking can be learned. But who you are on the inside is all up to you. Your story is all up to you. Your intellect, what you bring to the table, those are things that can never be taught to you by another person. Do you know what I mean? It's you. It's how you were born. It's how you conduct yourself. And those are important aspects in life and not just the physical things that we think are quite obvious. Because I feel like people like stressing themselves about those things. You know, am I going to have the most perfect walk when, when it comes to the end and people are talking about impactful people in society and in life, nobody is going to talk about how you walked on the Miss Universe stage the best way that you possibly could. could. Yeah. It's about your journey as a Miss Universe, as a Poochie. Yeah. What did you do? It's about what you say when you open your mouth to people. It's about the impact that you leave you know, in people's hearts. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like people shouldn't really concern themselves that much. I mean, they should. They should concern themselves about how they look and how they walk because it's all part of, you know, the competition. But it's not all that is. Because what I usually tell people is it starts at your interview room. That is like the biggest chunk of, that's where you first win half of the battle. Mm -hmm. Half of the journey is worn through that room when you walk in to those judges and you speak to them and they get a sense of who you are and you you give your story and your purpose. That's, That's the first step. Walking in and looking great, it kind of comes second after you've already made a first impression. Do you know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. for me, I think through my training, 
I those were the things that I focused on the most and I felt like those were my strongest points because I know myself. Nobody can ever tell me who I am. Nobody can ever tell me what I can bring to the table. I know those things. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I was like I'm going to go in there and and be myself and try to be as impactful as possible. I remember, if you will remember this as well. We had the same supervisor, if you guys don't know. <laughs> we had Tammy. the same supervisor. And so Tammy and so we were always together. Yeah. People were like, "Why are you guys always together?" I'm like, "Because we live on the <laughs> same floor and we have the same supervisor, and so we kind of always find ourselves in the same spaces." But one thing that frustrated people when we got there about was photos, you know, social media. Oh my god. <laughs> what a girl. Yeah, <laughs> right. I it was so stressful and people at home would call. Directors would call as well. I know. Did you post today designers like, would call. They would be like, like <laughs> did you post today. People are not mm -hmm. talking about you. You are not making top 10 in the fan pages. I know. Nobody cares about like fan pages. Like focus on yourself mm -hmm. like literally all you have to do is shut down all the noise because all of those things don't matter you're the one who's competing yeah. in the competition not the people no. who are commenting not the people who are making top 10 do you know that saying there's a saying um freddy that says don't allow people who are not in the arena to have opinions they're outside the arena they don't know what's happening mm -hmm. on the inside so you need to block those people out and i think that speaks more to just than pageantry it speaks into life in general like about the things that you want to achieve about your goals about your ambitions learn to prioritize and know what's important so yeah i think that's how i prepared for this journey i was just like i'm going to go in on a block out the noise i'm going to be myself and i think that was most of my mental preparation so no and i love how authentic you were during the like throughout Miss Universe competition because I guess you were the one of the girls that I really got along with because yeah. you, you know you were so funny and we would always have these interesting conversations and we would always laugh around I was just like wow you know this girl's not like just she's not just focused on like you're, you were of course focused on the competition but it wasn't just about the competition for you it was about other I'm things you know like fun. building relationships having fun enjoying the moment and I feel as though that was some of the things that could get to the other girls is that they forget to enjoy the moment but you were one of those girls that really did like stand to herself and just enjoyed every moment of it and that's why i was so surprised at how amazing you answered all those questions at miss universe <laughs> as soon as you opened your mouth for the for the question and answers for top 5 top 3 and everything that you like every minute you spoke i was just like yes yes like behind Thank stage you. you were like how is this this girl who was not taking herself too seriously i know <laughs> i was blown away i was like damn Thank that's you. really good yeah it's, so, it's really funny that you say that because i never took myself seriously the whole time i didn't walk around like practicing questions in my head and thinking i'm going to win i was just living you know in, in the moment of the whole competition yeah. making friends with people just mm -hmm. learning about who people are and so yeah i think yeah. It, it was we have questions from fans um they want to know what is the definition of of confidence what what would you say you know confidence is well i guess for me personally i would say that confidence is just not being afraid of what you're about to say because I feel as though everyone has their own right to their opinions. And confidence really means when you are like, you believe in what you think and you're not afraid to tell other people about it. And that's what I really think confidence is about because I understand confidence can also be linked to physical beauty, but you know, beauty, physical beauty for me, it's, for, you know, it's, uh, it comes in different lenses you know it's, it's not just like one idea yeah it's yeah. not just one idea of beauty so just being outspoken and not being afraid of failure and what comes to you i i agree what confidence you? is not being afraid of failure because mm -hmm. failure is failure starts when you when you give up 
that's what failure yeah. is to me. You know, if you if you try something the first time and you don't make it, when you go back to try again or try something new, that's not a failure. You know, you fail mm-hmm. when you decide to throw in the towel and give up on yourself. Uh, but yeah, confidence confidence for me is standing for your truth and always believing in in, in the things that you say, uh, believing in your story. That's what confidence really is to me. I, I always feel like my mom, when we spoke about confidence, she would say, you know, when you lie, people always catch up to your lies. And so when you speak the truth, you must always know that you will be confident because you know that it's yeah. your truth. You know that no one will try to catch you in that lie. Um, and also for me, confidence has actually come through reading because it's expanded my knowledge about how I see the world. It's helped, it's helped me formulate opinions, you know, um, about the world. So I, I think that's where my, mostly my confidence comes from when I speak, because I'm just like, totally. it's my opinion. Yeah. And most of the time when you're offering your opinions, it's never wrong because it's what you think. Um, mm-hmm. when, if people are asking me about confidence, especially when it comes to pageants, is that, when you walk in there, you, you speak your truth and you answer the questions. They never expect a right or wrong answer. There's no right yeah. or wrong answer when they ask you those questions. It's about what you say, how you say it, and how you stand for it. Uh, so I think that's, that's, that's what confidence is to me. Always believing and standing for your truth. But there's so many ways we can define confidence. It's so crazy. Um, okay, we have a second question. Okay, this one's for me. So your final speech was so beautiful. Any tips on public speaking? Oh, I think it's more or less the same. My tips on public speaking is that research, first of all. You yeah. should always research because when you are knowledgeable, it's not difficult to speak. I always find yeah. that whenever I get nervous to speak, it's because I don't know what the topic is about or it's because I don't know what I'm talking about. Then I get yeah. nervous. But if I know what I'm talking about, then I will always be confident. My final mm-hmm. answer when they ask me those questions, what do we think we should be teaching young girls? Why do I think I should be Miss Universe? Those are things that I believed in 100%, whether or not people in the arena agreed with me. That's what I believed in. And so that's why I was so confident in saying it because I was knowledgeable about it. So I think that's how we build confidence. We build it by being ourselves, first of all, and practicing, practicing confidence in ourselves. You practice confidence in yourself. And I think from then on, you're able to achieve a lot of things. So that's how I achieved my public speaking. Again, people. You could learn through documentaries. It doesn't even have to be about reading because other people are like, but I'm not a reader. What? Some people learn through documentaries. Some people learn through music. Some people learn through listening to stories. That's how you build your public speaking. Attach it to something that means something to you. Um, And then be confident about it and learn. So, yeah. That that's what I would say for you. How? Because you're a really good speaker yourself. Actually, oh, thank you. <laughs> I you try. really are. You really are. So how do you, how do you get that confidence? How did you become that speaker? Did you get any training for it? Is it something that comes natural? Um. Honestly, I think it. It. Of course, it took a lot of practice, and I think the biggest mm-hmm. lesson I learned for public speaking is just to throw away your ego. Because when you think about it, when you're on stage and you get nervous, you're not thinking about what you're saying and how it will affect other people. But you're thinking about, you know, what's going up on here? Like, how do I look? Or do I yeah. sound weird when I'm talking? Or is my voice okay? Am I, well, you know, am I not standing straight enough? And there's a bunch of things that you could be thinking about when you're speaking that will make you nervous. And when you throw away that ego and you think about why you're talking right now, like how, what you want the other person to feel or know after you've done your speech or after you finish talking. I think that's like the biggest tip that I would give another person is just Absolutely. forget about all those thoughts and just focus on how you want the audience to feel. Yeah, also to listen. Listening is such an important skill because sometimes I think we always listen to questions to rush to answer. Like take your time, don't, don't listen to answer, listen to understand. And then answer, because we're always yeah. in a rush in our heads. Like you want to sound perfect. I want to get in the thirty seconds. Listen, 
because I feel like if you listen to what people are saying, you're actually able to respond to the best of your abilities. And also, like you said, let go of the ego. And, and what what are people going to think of me if I mess up? Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. And also, people are not trying to catch you out. I always say this. People think that judges are trying to catch you out. She's not smart. I'm going to show her she's not smart. <laughs> That's not what judges are doing. <laughs> They're just there. to literally have a conversation with you it's always exactly. that thing. think about yes. it as a conversation yes yes That's that is way. perfect advice yeah that is the i always yeah every time i do a speech yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay think about it as a conversation guys don't think about mm-hmm. it as like i'm on the spot someone's just asking you your opinion so what do you think about this and that what do you think and yeah. I, i i believe in you guys i believe that you are incredibly smart young men and women who are able to hold a conversation that's just mm-hmm. all it is uh okay i have another oh tips for anyone tips for anyone competing on the miss universe stage Mm. <laughs> I guess I we know. spoke about some tips previously through our preparation. Yeah, I think as we've been speaking, yeah. we've, been, we've been giving a couple of of tips. Yeah. But um I think my biggest tip for anyone entering the competition is to know your story. Like mm. know yourself because it doesn't matter what people ask you, yes. it will always come back to who you are. It will yes. always come back to the core of who you are and everything that you believe in. So if you know yourself, if you have a purpose and you have a story, doesn't matter what people ask you, it will always come back to who you are. So, I mean, when people speak about authenticity, they're not being ridiculous. They're not being yeah. cliché. That's what it is. Like you are just arriving as your true self, you know your mm-hmm. story, you know your thing. Don't go in there blindsided. And that's all I'm saying. Like, don't walk in there blindsided. Walk in there knowing who you are to the core. It's so important to know ourselves. Because when we are so stable in who we are, we're able to make the right choices. Yeah, so, for sure. That's my biggest tip. I couldn't agree anymore. No, Especially during the interview. Because, you know, the judges, they're not asking you about off topics. You know, they're not asking you about... No. Uh, I mean, of course, there'll be some random questions thrown in about world issues or something. But they're... They may only ask about, about you because they want to know you know Nobody's why is this girl joining this universe? They want to know why what makes you the next Miss Universe basically. Literally no one's going to ask you who was the first man to walk on planet Earth. Nobody's going <laughs> to ask you who is like the 1000th president of no it's about you. Yeah. It's about cuz yeah. it's an interview for a job. I think that's what people yeah. Being Miss Universe is a job and that is an interview and they want to know if you're the best fit for the organization. And so it's always going to be about you and your opinions of the world. Obviously, mm-hmm. you have to keep in mind about current issues that are happening in the mm-hmm. world. You have to be knowledgeable yeah. about your surroundings because mm-hmm. when you win, you are going to be having these conversations and interviews. People are going to want to know, what do you think of this corona pandemic that's happening? It's something that you have to know. So my advice is always be knowledgeable about world issues. Not all of them clearly because you're not a robot, but at least like the big things that are happening during that time, you should know those things so that when they ask you about your opinions about them, you are able to answer. Again, it's always going to be your opinion about those things, you know. So again, it's about you um and what you can bring to the table. So anyone who's competing, don't be scared when you walk into that interview room. they want to know about you again it's a conversation it's a conversation because you know what people people make a mistake of walking in and just getting into interview mode hi my name is frederica and i'm here to i want to be in this universe because a b c and d like that's not you're not a robot it's a mm. conversation so i think that's the biggest tip that i would give be yourself and be brave yeah let me see if people have any other questions do you have any questions for me friend i do actually some indonesian fans i mean everybody wants to know how indonesia was for you the most memorable moment oh. you had in indonesia and when you're coming back <laughs> when i'm coming back <laughs> well after this coronavirus of course yeah i can't travel now i 
I loved Indonesia. Two of the times that mm-hmm. I was there, I absolutely loved it. And it was both for different reasons. You know, the first time that I went there, it was obviously my first contact with the place. And I was like, oh my God, this place is beautiful, you know? And, and then I started meeting the people. And I think I started meeting more people when I came the second time around. So my first impression was, this is a beautiful place, beautiful scenery. It's like picture perfect is what it is. But then I think my second step in phase was meeting the people. Because what I always say is, people already know Indonesia is beautiful. They've seen it on Google. They've seen it on every photo. But what they might not know is the beauty of its people. And... Mm -hmm the politeness of the people and they, they are they're so hospitable you know because when i went yeah. there I, I felt so much at home i felt acceptance and, and so much love uh from the people so i loved it i i loved indonesia and i would love to come back again as soon as this ends and as soon as somebody invites me back to i'll indonesia. invite you <laughs> thanks, thanks. Thanks. have a bali girls trip <laughs> of course Bali girls trip. I love that. Mm-hmm. Somebody asked how you deal with haters, Brittany. How do you deal with haters? Like people just always constantly being there telling you horrible things. Yeah, I, I dealt with a lot of that during throughout my career and throughout mm-hmm. being Miss Indonesia a lot, definitely. I mean, I, there was a lot of um, criticism of me being so young and entering the competition. Mm-hmm. Um, me being half Indonesian, of course. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, language skills and my Bahasa skills, because I did speak with a foreign accent. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there were people judging me what, like, how, what makes this girl think that she could be Miss Indonesia? So I had to deal with a lot of uh, criticism th- at the very beginning of my pageant career. And I think one of the things that really stopped me from letting those haters get into my mind was just understanding that, these haters have never met you in person. They've never, they don't know anything about you. And they only know what you show on social media. And it's such a small amount. I mean, if you, um, being public figures, of course, like we always get judged on what we show on social media. If we, if one thing we do that's bad, we post it on social media and everyone judges it. Judges it. Um, I'm, I guess that, you know, people would think that we're horrible people if everything that we did wrong was published on social media. And I guess that's one thing that we have to triumph is that these haters don't know anything about you. You should just trust yourself. Their judgment does not change anything you do in your life. They won't change anything you do in the future. Mm-hmm. So just believe the people that you love and accept the love that you have with your closest family and friends, because that is honestly enough. And I would be, I would be telling a lie if sometimes the haters didn't bother me. I mean, there were times that they really did affect me that, you know, comments, not just about me, but comments about my family and my mother and my father, like it would definitely affect me and hit me to hit me in the deepest way they could. Uh, because, you know, it's normal for a daughter to feel hurt when their mother is being attacked or for the other way around. Like, how would it make you feel if your mother saw, like, the negative comments that were spoken about you yeah. from people that don't even know you? Like, it does hurt. And a lot of people suffer from it. And you just have to know that you're not alone. And those comments, honestly, they don't change anything with your life. And you just have to they really don't. stop. They really yeah. don't. I I yeah. mean, for me, literally everything you've just said, spot on, spot on, spot on. I, mm-hmm. It's so crazy because, like you said, one, these people don't know you. And sometimes I'm like, if you people would meet these people in person, you would really know that they're such yeah. lovely people and how amazing they are and you wouldn't want to attack them online I know. because you don't know them. And secondly, I think how I always looked at this from my side is these are people who were rooting for somebody else. They were rooting mm-hmm. for their country. They were rooting for another girl. And so the mm-hmm. minute I won, mm-hmm. it meant that their person didn't win. And so it's coming from a hurtful place from them they are, they are hurt and maybe this is how they are reacting and so that's why they're deciding to send all those hateful messages again it has absolutely nothing to do with me 
and who I am. Yeah. It's a them problem. It's them not being able to process that they just lost or their girl that they like just lost, you know. And so yeah. that's how they react. And also for me it's it's purely it's just not about you people are dealing with so many different things in the world. Um and sometimes they don't know how to deal with the hurt. And sometimes when you go out and you live your best life and you chase your dreams, mm-hmm. people who don't who are afraid to chase their dreams mm-hmm. might have some kind of 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 frustration that somebody else is doing what they are not able to do. Do you know what I mean? People have dreams and they are afraid to chase them and once they see someone who has that courage to do it, they start sending all these hateful messages because I guess it's a reflection of what they think their life might never be. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I deal with, you know, hateful messages and hateful comments. I look at them and I'm like, that's okay. If that's how you feel, that's fine. It's got nothing to do with me and it doesn't affect me because 90% of people are so supportive of me and my journey. Also the people that I know, my family and my friends are there yes. for me. Those those are the people that I need in my corner the most, you know? Um so haters going to hate girl. Haters <laughs> gonna hate. But you know, I was watching this show called The Crown and The Crown um it speaks about yeah, I've heard about it. the Queen of England. Do you know what she says? She says something so powerful. She says, well I'm not going to say it verbatim, but she says um you might not feel like I deserve to be here. There might be people who might be more qualified at this job than me. There might be people who are more beautiful than me. There might be people who are more smarter than me, but the crown landed on my head. And I said, "Who? Crown. Hail to the queen." Crown. She said it. She said it landed and there's nothing you can do because here's the thing, those people are not god. They cannot yeah. decide on your life. So it's not even about pageantry, it's about just your life in general if you're going through something and you feel like people are not being supportive and people are hating you on social media mm-hmm. and like bullying you those people are not your god they don't have the final decisions about your life you mm-hmm. ended up where you are because you worked so hard and you belong there and doesn't matter what they say they're not going to change it they hate they they gave so much hate for you for being putchi indonesia but did that change you being putchi indonesia No, it exactly. It's not. Exactly. So so what I'm exactly. saying is don't be phased. Don't be phased. It's just yeah. comments. They're not going to do anything yeah. to you. They're going to pass. They're going to pass. Yeah. Um okay, I know we've been talking a lot about pageantry and I know you have a life way beyond that. I know that you have <laughs> something that you're working on because you are a smart yes. woman. You are a COO of a think tank which is really mm-hmm. focusing on um what's happening in the pandemic at the moment mm-hmm. can you do you want to tell us yeah. about that i i want to yes, find out what you want to yes yeah, so um i started with my friends uh we're starting a think tank in indonesia for millennials actually focus on the youth in indonesia because we see such a development in indonesia of youth wanting to contribute to their community from mm-hmm. wanting to get involved in politics or wanting to be more um more involved in their country's future matters. Mm. So I guess that's one of the biggest reasons why we started it, especially during the coronavirus. You know, a lot of people want to help but they don't know how. And we just wanted a simple platform that could give the youth and students a voice to speak on, to share their opinions and to work together because that's one way that we're going to get through this pandemic is to work together as a community. So we just wanted to give that platform for them. I mean, um besides being a think tank and working together with students actually, Indonesian students who go to university overseas and in Indonesia to provide the research and information. We also have different projects that we provide our following. So for example, we also have this community program. And it's basically a program where we offer students who want to make uh have the chance who want to make their own organization or want to make their own platform and we it's part of like a judging table so we look at the platform or we look at the project that they want to start and if we think it would help the community we actually fund their project for them in the future so that's something that we have 
going on. And besides that, of course, we offer content and reliable, uh, reliable information about coronavirus because I know how scary the news can be yeah. for anybody. Like hearing these things that you don't necessarily know is reliable or not, it could scare anybody. So that's one reason that we also really wanted to start is a reliable news source about coronavirus that the youth could have easy access to and know that what they're reading is the truth. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so amazing. And, and what, how old are you again? Please remind us. I'm 20. <laughs> 20, doing all of these things for 20. That is, you know, that's so incredible. And it's just testament mm -hmm. to the kind of caliber of women, you know, that come through. Uh, to these competitions to represent their countries. You know, we stand for so much more. We stand for so much more than people think. You know, it's, it's more than just the surface. It goes in, you know, beyond. It's an intellect mm -hmm. thing. It's a heart thing. And mm -hmm. so I'm so proud of you. You, oh, you are doing incredible things, not only for yourself, but for your country. And I think that's fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to take two more questions, I think. And then... <laughs> And then we probably have to depart, which makes me sad. <laughs> I know, because it's been a while since we talked as well. Um, okay, what is the hardest thing that Freddie has felt during the quarantine? I think that's the question. Or during the quarantine uh, at the MU 2019. Oh, I think this question means, like, what's uh, the hardest thing? you had to deal with when we were at Miss Universe, like when we were there, that computing week. I think that's what that question means. Like what's the um, thing hardest you had to deal thing? With? Uh, wow, what could be the hardest thing? I guess it's just probably, it would probably have to do with mentally, like being, keep being yourself and still be able to be yourself whilst being in the competition. Because for yeah. me, it was such a big thing thing to enter a competition with so many beautiful and successful smart intelligent ladies like I've never had the experience where I entered a room and there was 89 other contestants 89 yeah. other women that were beyond beautiful. yes smart. beyond beautiful and in <laughs> every way in every way and that was like whoa that was just like a complete new experience for me mm -hmm. but um that was definitely the biggest thing i had to overcome is just like not letting myself be insecure of what i'm bringing to the table and just still okay this is me there might be other girls there that have amazing careers and might be doctors lawyers or have done so many things in their lives but you know you've done amazing things too in your yeah, life and even though you're young you have to believe what you bring to the table you have to know the reason why you're doing this and yeah. why you started your pageant journey so that was definitely the hardest thing a challenge <laughs> i love that you were honest about yeah. that because it's true you get there and you meet all these other incredible women and you're just like oh my god should i even be here like do i, I know. deserve to be here do i belong I know. here you know you start getting so much doubts about yourself and, and, and who you are and what you stand for and so i think that mm -hmm. is always the biggest challenge to block out the noise and sometimes the noise doesn't even come from people it comes from yourself as well because i think at times we are our biggest um we are our biggest problems our biggest critics yeah, our biggest every, yeah. yeah and so it is such a mental game like you have to be strong yeah the whole time mm -hmm. and know that it doesn't matter what other people are offering you also are offering things that are amazing and it's always so good to remember that there's only one Freddy. There's only one Zozi. Nobody there. That's like that's the one advantage you have over everyone. Nobody is you. You are you. That's one yeah. standard thing that sets you apart. And so I think that's what we always have to remember in everything that we do. Whether we're going to a job interview, um, whether we're building relationships and friendships, it's something that we should always remember that you are special. Literally, when you were made and created. You were made differently to serve a different purpose than anyone else in the world. And so when people start to try and, and like bring you down and bring that noise in your head, always remember that there's nobody else like you. Nobody can do the things that you do ever, 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 you know? So yeah, I think that's an important one. Freddie, oh, I'm so sad because this was like 
coming to an end, but I want you to say oh. your, do you have any final words that you want to leave our listeners with? Um, just any words of, of love, light and encouragement, mm-hmm. anything? Um, yeah, I would tell all my, everyone listening right now is just to be strong. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a very hard time for everyone and everyone is being affected by this pandemic with anybody, like some more than others. Mm-hmm. But the only way we're going to get through this pandemic is just working together as a global community. I mean, helping try and find simple ways to help those around you and like to throw away anything that's selfish inside of you and just help others. And there's so many different ways that you can help the community as well. Like you could, it could be simply just promoting an organization that's helping in your community uh, through coronavirus, or it could just be helping your neighbor, you know, or the elderly, people who are getting affected by it the most. So just stay positive. We're going to get through this quicker if we work together. Absolutely. Thank you mm-hmm. so much for those beautiful Thank words. You. I'm so happy that you can <laughs> me today. I'm so happy that you yes. can share your knowledge you for and joy me. and light <laughs> on our day. Um, I hope that you keep safe and well, you know, physically, yes. mentally, and emotionally as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the world needs more people who are doing what you do. So continue doing it. And always remember that there's one Freddie. There will only ever be one and it doesn't matter what people say to you or about you. Um, You know yourself, you know why you're here in this earth, you're placed for a reason. So always remember that. Thanks, Freddie. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We have to talk sometime soon. Yeah, of course. You have my number. I have your number. Plan that girls (laughs) trip to Bali at some point. (laughs) Stay safe. I've been planning trips with so many people. I'm so scared. I'm like, Girl, I have so many plans to go to all these places. <laughs> <laughs> well, add me to the list then. <laughs> um, of course, of course you are. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, bye, love everyone. You, bye. Love you too. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for joining that chat. That was so refreshing because it's always so nice to see people you begin a a journey with, just to see how far they've progressed in life and to see um, the things that they're doing. I think the most important thing that we should have taken from this chat is that cyberbullying and and bullying other people is is not something that we should be doing. It's something that we should frown upon. I think one thing I've learned about bullying as well is that um, it starts from a very young age. It starts in how we nurture young children. And I feel like if we we nurture kids in kindness and in love and in teaching them tolerance and a love for themselves. Because I feel like the more we love ourselves and and, and who we are, it's so difficult for us to start hating, you know, on other people. So teach your children kindness, teach them love and tolerance, and they will grow up to be amazing people in society who are kinder and nicer and warmer uh, to people. So thank you so much for joining us today. I think we should all just learn to appreciate ourselves more, to love ourselves more, to know that we have so much to offer to the world and that it doesn't matter what other people think about you or where you are. You deserve to be where you are because you worked hard for it. Um, So yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Remember to spread love and light and remember to share your stories with us on hashtag Universe United. We love, love, love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. Please join me again for another live with another special guest. Bye.